there's multiple different ways in which insulin resistance can come upon us. One of which is, of course, the pancreatic beta cells not producing enough insulin itself. The other side is not actually having insulin receptors that are receiving the insulin properly. Okay, it's, it's happening in multiple ways. There's, of course, the inflammatory issues where there's just so much inflammation, it's almost like this static where the insulin can't really get the proper signal because there's so much static. Okay, and then there's also this hyper exhaustion that occurs of the pancreas itself, like where it's so tired and there's actual beta cell burnout that the cells within the pancreas will literally die. They just give up because they're so overstimulated and overcompensating that they just burn out. Then you have less pancreatic beta cells that have to take on more of the load and they burn out. So you can see how that's a vicious cycle. So yeah, we can talk about like reducing our glucose intake. We can talk about all these things, but that doesn't help us at the actual insulin receiving level. It doesn't help the cells receive the signal from insulin very well. So we're gonna talk about some newer data on magnesium and how you might be able to use magnesium to improve this. I mean, you've heard what it is. Yes, it's magnesium. You could pop some magnesium capsules, but let's talk about how it works. And for the algorithm, please stick around. And for the algorithm, please drop a comment down below. When you hear what I'm talking about and then you just click off the video because you trust me and you, you know, heard I said magnesium, that's great, I'm glad I help you, but it also hurts the video, so please stick around. Also, I put a link down below for 30% off Thrive Market. So that link gets you 30% off your entire grocery order, and they've got so much new stuff now. So over the last year or so, they've added a lot of new foods that people just can't get at their grocery stores normally because, well, they live in an area where they can't get specialty foods, but these are specialty foods that are better priced and affordably priced and they're things that just, you never have to worry about having nefarious ingredients. So that's what I love about it. It's easy, they ship to your doorstep, and I can just rest assured that even if I'm getting chocolate, it's not gonna be garbage chocolate, right? So that link is down below, it gets you 30% off and that free gift, check them out. So we'll start with a study that was published in the Iranian Journal of Basic Medical Science. And it's not like a fringe journal. I know it sounds like it is. It's a pretty well-established journal. So what they were looking at with this study was insulin resistance and type two diabetes. And they were looking at how magnesium supplementation would improve a few things. Uh, insulin sensitivity itself, insulin levels, insulin receptors, and genes associated with insulin. All in all, it was fascinating research. The really quick synopsis is magnesium dramatically increased insulin sensitivity and significantly decreased the instance of insulin resistance by increasing the genes that were associated with insulin receptors. So basically it helped produce more genes or turn on more genes that would turn on and activate and create more insulin receptors. Now this is going to be a very basic explanation, but imagine you have a cell, okay, and that cell has just 10 glucose or insulin receptors to actually receive a signal from insulin. Okay, if five of those receptors are dead, then you have half the amount of insulin that can actually hit that cell to do its job. So then the pancreas is like, I gotta produce more, right? So if you express the genes, what's gonna happen is then you're going to populate more. You're gonna give, give birth to more insulin receptors. Very scientifically inaccurate, but simple analogy, right? So when you're increasing more insulin receptors, it takes the load off of the pancreas. Okay, so now the load is off the pancreas. The pancreas can actually restore its function and those poor beta cells and islet cells, which are clusters of these cells, can take a little bit of a break and they can actually go through their own regenerative processes, reduce the inflammation that's associated with it, because what happens is as the pancreas becomes inflamed and stressed out from all of this chronic overload and oxidative stress, then you can end up with even mild cases of pancreatitis, and this is affecting like exocrine function, so that's actually producing digestive enzymes, that goes down, so then you have all these downstream effects. Okay, now we need to talk about the different kinds of magnesium for a second, so you know what to actually take here, because this study was looking at varying dosages, and what I would recommend is that most people take between four and 600 milligrams of magnesium per day. Now, magnesium citrate, magnesium oxide, these can send you running to the toilet, so I don't necessarily recommend you take those unless you have a very specific use case of needing rapid absorption. Okay, magnesium citrate is great if you need to flush some things out of your bowels. Okay, but what we do need to look at is the types of magnesium. So I'm personally a fan 
of magnesium glycinate and magnesium uh, dimagnesium malate. So a magnesium bound to a malic acid. This is a more sustained release. And when we're looking at pancreatic beta cell function, that makes the most sense, right? We wanna be able to slowly, kind of easily take the load off of the pancreas throughout the day. And you wanna restore the cellular signaling over the course of the day or this insulin signaling over the course of the day rather than just like one quick rampant hit of high dose magnesium. Now magnesium glycinate makes sense to take at night because it's bound to glycine, which has a powerful cooling effect. So I recommend that. Personally, I take magnesium malate throughout the day and I also take magnesium glycinate at night. Magnesium threonate is the only magnesium that has been shown in evidence to like cross through the blood brain barrier. So although it's a great compound, I don't think that it has a practical application here. This is not where we're, lo we're not looking for magnesium to get into the brain in this case. I think it's great for feeling calm and feeling sharp, but for metabolic function, it may not be the best route to go. It might just be a waste of your money. It's a little bit more of an expensive compound too. Now, I quickly wanna talk about how magnesium restored this too, because it's important to understand. And I have an analogy for you. Imagine you're driving down the road and you hit a red light, okay? Now there's like a, a standard signaling, like it feels the weight of cars and it understands, okay, at this point it's time to signal the light, right? Now there's an indirect way that that light can be signaled that can override that. You know what that is? It's a pedestrian hitting the crosswalk button. That will typically, to a certain degree, override the general flow of traffic. It says, uh-oh, there's a person here, we need to kind of adjust the traffic light. Well, magnesium is sort of like the pedestrian in this case. It's coming through and it's hitting a signal that is actually for its own need. It needs to go somewhere, it's activating things, but indirectly, it's actually impacting the flow of traffic. Now, in the case of stopping traffic, magnesium is not the case, it's actually like the reverse. It's almost as though magnesium is allowing traffic through, but the analogy still makes sense. It's the indirect analogy I'm getting at. So in essence, magnesium is like a pedestrian that is indirectly controlling the flow of traffic. So if we don't have magnesium and we're running with these issues, the body's just gonna be left to its own devices. In most cases, metabolic dysfunction is just gonna just continue on its merry way of dysfunction and problems. So magnesium comes in and it provides like the consistent sort of flow that we need. Maybe not the best analogy when we're looking at like the entire body as a system, but it helps, under, helps us understand like the indirect mechanism and thing at play. So magnesium is affecting something called beta arrestin 2. Beta arrestin 2 is a, a gene that is associated with signaling, insulin signaling. Now when beta arrestin 2 is elevated, it actually can arrest some of that signaling and actually slow it down. So when you downregulate this beta arrestin 2, you're actually increasing the amount of insulin that can get to a cell itself. Now another thing that I wanna talk about doing with this that's independent of magnesium is using apple cider vinegar with your carbohydrate meals. Okay, and this isn't just to reduce glucose, this is to be able to slow down the glucose response and be able to sort of uh, reduce that hyper exhaustion. Okay, so we need to work on this at two angles. If the pancreas is still burnt out, it's gonna take a really long time for magnesium to have a positive impact. But if we can simultaneously have apple cider vinegar that has acetic acid and can turn down sort of the, a or increase AMPK and ultimately increase the amount of like fuel the cell can use, then we put ourselves in a great spot from two sides. So it doesn't have to be a permanent thing, but apple cider vinegar along with carbohydrates not only slows the digestion of the carbohydrates, making it less load on the pancreas, but it also puts you in a spot where the cell becomes, develops a stronger affinity to soak up fuel, helping you from multiple different metabolic angles. So these two things, magnesium and apple cider vinegar, have a profound effect on improving pancreatic health and ultimately insulin resistance. Now, you still have to do the metabolic work. Don't get me wrong, I would recommend walking after meals, I would recommend some fasted cardio, I would recommend time-restricted feeding, going 12 hours, periods of time without food if you can. I would recommend allocating carbohydrates to like one meal of the day versus you know lots of different times you're constantly secreting insulin. These kind of things all matters and I've got dozens of videos on these, but I wanted to give a quick shot based on the cool new research with magnesium. I'll see you tomorrow.